The People's Democratic Party and other opposition parties have lamented the level of insecurity in Nigeria. And Muslim Rights Concern rejects Governor Sawolu's endorsement for a second term. This is Plus Politics and I'm Kofi Bartels. You're welcome. The People's Democratic Party and two other opposition parties have lamented the rising insecurity in the country, which has caused the death of 12,250 citizens between January 2021 and March 2022. According to a report compiled by a research group SBM Morgan, or SB Morgan rather, and an advocacy network Enough is Enough Nigeria, 6,102 civilians were killed within the period, while 1,055 security personnel were also killed. Now, further breakdown, breakdown shows that 571 of those killed were soldiers, 307 police officers, and 193 vigilante members. Very grim statistics, but uh, joining us to discuss this is Public Affairs Analyst Ihe Chakui Beji. I'm glad to say he joins us live in the stu studio. Uh, Mr. Beji, good evening to you. Thanks for your time. Good evening, and thank you very much. These are really grim statistics. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, it, sh it should send a shiver down the spine of anyone. Yeah. What did you say? It does send shivers down the spine of everyone, and especially um, given the fact that um, there seems not to be any um, um, actual head on uh, manner in which it can be handled or it can be managed or it can be nipped in the board. Um, loss of life everywhere is um, something that is um, taken very weightily. It's not, it's not an easy thing. And, and what's even more pr uh, frightening is the fact that um, it progressively over time, and it, it, it's not something that, that started uh, today or in, in, this, in this dispensation, it's something that, that uh, far, um, of course, um, has outstayed this dispensation. It has progressively um, become more sophisticated so to so to speak, uh, these are not these are not these are not um, mean these are not you know mean figures, and there's no lighter way of saying it than to say that the situation is just is just horrible. It's all, 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 all right, because this is plus politics, we always look at the political angle of things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, as far as the People's Democratic Party is concerned, yeah. uh, and the statements they are making. Um, you know, not just the PDP, but two other opposition parties lamenting the rising insecurity in the country. Is this political fodder, you know, political uh, um, hay, you know, for the, the PDP at such a time? Absolutely. Um, you, you see that um, uh, one of the nexus of um, one of the one of the key points, objectives of, of, for this current dispensation, uh, which they used to campaign, which they used to come into power, was um, uh, to guarantee security and to, to nip in the board the insecurity that had been um, fostering right from the previous administration that they met on ground. So every every political party at this point, especially as we as we advance towards the 2023 elections, will begin to use this as a, a, a campaign, you know, a campaign um, strategy to see how they can also um, win votes. But I, I, I like to, um, you know, of course, I like to deviate a lot of times away from um, the mere politics of these numbers because we're talking about lives and property of people. Um, the value of livelihood, the, 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 the value of life itself, and the quality of life has so diminished. And um, uh, these deaths that have been, these wanton killings that are going on are not just um, anything you can politicize so easily. So away from um, them coming out to try to use these figures to campaign and all of that, um, you must look at um, the psychological and the actual situation on ground. And, and the actual situation on ground is not something that you can just wave away. Um, so yes, a lot of political parties, and I mean, this is just one, this is just one part of it, are going to use this as part of their manifesto. Uh, of course, what, it, what you're going to find is that this current dispensation will be on the slab of the judgment of, mm -hmm. of, of the people and, and, and the politicians and the political parties are going to milk it. Mm -hmm. And um, if you look at this kind of figures, this is more or less like a performance slate board for them. And this performance slate board doesn't really do good.
Interesting. It doesn't look and, good. And whilst, whilst the, the statistics cannot be argued with, you know, whilst the numbers cannot be argued with, um, sh should Nigerians also uh, be be cognizant or have bear in mind that it, you know, you know, before you you remove the speck from your neighbor's eye, you need to clear the one off your eye as well, and and take the 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 criticism, the statements of these political parties, uh, um, with some caution. What, you know, look look behind the scenes and also realize that this is also political milk for them. Yeah, absolutely. Look, look. Let, let, let me say this so clearly, and let me say this. Um, there's no better way to say it, and and we only, as a people, be deceiving ourselves. We don't we don't tell ourselves the truth. Um, the security insecurity challenges that any administration, this current administration, face faces is not a little one. It's not a small one. Uh, apparently, when they were probably campaigning um, to come into power, they must have looked at it from the rhetorics and looked at it from the plans, looked at it from the grammar and the objectives. But what you find on ground is totally different um, because um, it's, insecurity is not something that you can just wish away or tackle away. Mm -hmm. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to tell you that, look, um, any political party that's going to um, use this as a campaign chip must be ready to show um, that it can tackle. If for nothing else, the current administration have had the experience of actually facing the actual insecurity and they've seen for themselves um, um, how not very um, easy it is. And it's not to say that they've not made effort. To be quite frank, it will only be foolhardy to come out and say that they've not made effort. They have made effort. But um, uh, it is one thing to make effort and it's also another thing to see um, those efforts, um, of course, tail into uh, uh, you know, success. They have had their successes and at the same time, um, they've had their failures in this in this area of insecurity and then um, I'm sure that genuinely they will continue to try to see what they can do but they have to keep trying to do more and more because once a life goes it can never be gotten back all right all right interesting and very important rather once a life goes it can never be gotten back and um, once again we'll still we'll try and you know keep bring up more political juice out of this <laughs> um, um, uh, you know it, it, it's the People's Democratic Party itself um, do they have a moral justification um, to to judge the APC on, on this. I'm not talking about Nigerians, so the party itself. What do you say? As dispassionately as I would like to always remain in everything I say or anything, every time I come out to comment, I don't think they have any moral justification. Well, why would because, you say so? because they also had an opportunity to tackle the same security challenge when they were in power. Right, and why they may say that um, the, the records show that it was less compared to now, the truth of the case was that it still remained there. That insecurity challenge still remained there, and you know, it actually started to fester as at that time. You know, we started to it, we started to experience a lot of insecurity as at the last. PDP uh, led, you know, when they were in power. We started to experience what was called, from different angles, we experienced Niger, Niger Delta militancy, we experienced the Boko Haram attacks, we began to experience a bit of kidnapping, and we'd run some, you know, attack to it. And, and, and you know, it, it, since 2011, you know, there's been, there's been um, um, a source that speaks to us having paid over $18 million in ransom alone, and ransoms have been charged of between $1,000 and fifteen. million. These are uh, ransom paid by, by families? Families. Yes, by families. Friends, and, and, and you know, these are things that we started to experience not from this current dispensation. So they will have to be faced with the, with the moral justification to convince the people that what they did before by not being able to nip it in the board then, nip it in the board in such a manner that this current dispensation used it as a campaign chip to come into power. They are able to, uh, you know, get a magic wand to do that same thing at that time. And that's something that they are faced with at this current time. You know, the, the, the elections, the general elections are around the corner. The political scene is heated up as we speak. And Nigerians will soon have to make a choice between, you know, which political parties uh, of the 18 available as for, from INEC, you know, um, and that will be on the ballot paper um if all things go according to plan yeah or you know <laughs> we, we, we can't be too sure <laughs> in these days yeah you know but um, nigerians have to make a choice yes now are you, are you confident that the voting public is aware of the issues you know and aware enough to be able to say hey all progressives congress presidential election these are the issues or problems you have at least i'm a voter in kaduna <laughs> state i'm a voter in borno state i'm a voter in benue state you have failed as far as insecurity is concerned I will not vote for you. Or tell me what you're going to do better before I vote for you. Or, hey, PDP, when you were there, we still had these issues and you didn't even make it any better. Boko Haram came up while you held sway. So what are you going to do? Do we have the voters who 
um, uh, you know, have, have such an awareness to ask these questions and in an informed way vote? Let me be very sincere to you and point blank. Um, I, I see a situation whereby the voting public are going to be looking at the individual, not entirely about the party. Now, the party brings forth the individual, but the, 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 the integrity, the composure, the track record of the individual is going to sway a lot. And, you know, let's, let's, let's be very clear. None of the parties have really done, done you know, done themselves a, world, a whole world of good when it comes to the major issues on ground, such as insecurity, none of the parties. Mm. But, but what about when it comes to the presidential election where you have just one man and then a flag bearer, uh, a running mate, rather? Um, I, I, do, do, do you, are you confident that Nigerians can look at the track record of these parties and based on the track record say, I will vote for you because you you give me a reason to vote for you or because you have failed and I don't believe you can do any, more, any better? They would, Nigerians will speak with the PVC. Mm -hmm. And they speak, they speak with their PVCs based, based on the failures of, the, of, of, of any party that fields a candidate that is not, you know, that is not, you know, attractive, attractive to the people. That, it, is not, that is not accepted by the people. There's a school of thought. You know, I've, I've had the chance to talk to some, you know, of your, of your fellow uh, public affairs analysts. They say nothing is going to change. The people are not aware enough or independently minded enough to make the hard decisions, to say... APC, this candidate you're presenting us, we think he's going, we're going to vote for him because we think he can solve the security. He's convinced us. Or, PD, or APC, we won't vote for you. Or PDP, we will vote for you, we won't vote based on ABC. We're talking about security or insecurity as the case may be. There's a school of thought that says nothing will change. It's going to be business as usual because we're not ready to change anything. I've heard that school of thought too. In fact, I've been in conversations as a public analyst, experienced public affairs analyst over time to, to have arguments and discussions about that. But I, I kind of feel differently. Maybe I'm one of those who are not part of the 12 disciples. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm one of those who are outside the 12. Maybe you can say 13. But, you know, in, 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 this, in, in all the years that we've ever, ever, in all the years that we've ever had elections, this is one, one election that's so important because these seven years have seen Nigerians in a different level. But, we, you know, you know we, we're talking. Mm. I, you know, I, I, also, I also present the program on radio as well as on TV. I hear people commenting on social media. People are talking. But we are still talking. And it seems nothing will change. Do you remember? We're just going to get to the point and the, the usual is still going to emerge. And we all just go and vote, and just things are just going to continue. Nothing will change. Most of the time, I like to say, let's wait for when the action happens. But what I like to also tell you is that the people showed their hands during the um, during the um, the NSARS issue. The passion. After that, what happened? Well, after that, after that, what after that, after that, it is all bottled up. It's all bottled up because oh. be, because because you cannot you cannot head them off. You cannot head them off the voting the voting the voting polling votes. They are going to walk down to the polling vote, whether you like it or not. Have you ever been to the polling vote? I voted in almost every other election. And how fiercely they guard their votes at those polling votes and count it is very key. So you need you to know, understand you, something you, that you, you cannot... You know, and what I'm trying to tell you is that you yeah. cannot wish away... You cannot wish away we, we, the examination we, 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 of the We people. keep talking about NSARS. And I mean, a lot of people were happy to see that the young people were rising up to speak with their voices at NSARS. But, but I mean, right now... The message that has been passed is that you fire some bullets. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to trivialize uh, the, the massacres the panel has, has rightly, uh, 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 you, know, you know, called it. You know, I don't mean to downplay. But, but the message that has been clearly passed is that the people will run back to their shells, you know, if you fire some gunshots. Now, I had been in Port Harcourt before coming to Lagos. And uh, you have people who are listening or watching us right now in Port Hackett. They can tell you the election times when the major parties brought out their boys or brought out people in uniforms, who God knows where they're coming from, with weapons, the voting public ran back home. Nobody came out to vote. If Nobody came out to vote. If the politician and the, polit the political parties do not think or they believe that it's going to be business as usual, then they should not campaign. They will campaign, but, no, they shouldn't campaign. But, but nothing is, people are just going to say, you know what, I don't feel safe enough to go vote because I'm in the southeast, I'm going to stay at home. Well, you, I don't feel safe enough to vote because I'm in the northwest and northeast or middle belt, they're going to stay at home. It's going to be affected Some, in certain Someone's going to say, oh, I'm seeing one million boys, I'm seeing NURT or some other group on the street with machetes in Lagos, they're chasing people away, I'm not going to vote. 
Oh, the, the police are looking the other way. They are not doing anything. I'm not going to vote. People have not demonstrated the fact that they will not back down even if lives are lost. And that is the message that has been transmitted to those who, uh, who, who are ready to do anything. This pattern has been on for years, as I said before. Lives have been lost before now. Yeah. People have tried to show some kind of apathy that they will, not, they, will not, they will not vote when the time is there. But let me be very, very clear and certain to you. The will of the people is strong. You cannot, you cannot win with that. Let, let's look at, I, I mean, let's look at the, the ANSARS anniversary. Okay. We have the ANSARS anniversary. Yeah. And um, people wanted to march to, to, um, to mark the anniversary. And the police, Commissioner Hakim Odumosu, who supervised the police actions during ANSARS and was given uh, an, an honorary, um, an award by the Lagos State House of Assembly after that, or before that, I need to check. Yeah, after that, when he was leaving. And now, with this Lagos State Traffic or uh, Motor Parks Union that MC Oluomo of SWA NURTW, or the SWA NURTW chairman, has now been placed in charge, they're now fighting with other, other factions or other groups. He was also made a part of that. Thank you. Clapping for him. Well done. Now, the man said, no protests would be allowed on the anniversary of NSARS. And the protesters and the young people and old people alike all obeyed. They sat in their cars and then drove past the Lekito. Nobody came down. The few managed to come down. They were arrested. Nobody said anything. Nobody said anything. Nothing will change. You missed the point. The point wasn't that people were going to protest. The point was that they were going to mark their memorial and as long as they were concerned, and, and, but, but, they but, passed that message. Okay. Whether they were in their car, whether they were in their car, honking on their horns, whether they waved, they waved the flags, whether they whether they, they, they drove past with speed, yet they came out. And that, to me, showed a will. What about you cannot wave aside the fact that look, ensigns transcended the young or the youth. Absolutely. It was a strong message Absolutely. of people who had come out and said, "Look, this is our feeling. This is how we felt," mm. and that message was strong. And anybody who's going to trivialize that message or who's going to trivialize the fact that the will of the people is something that you cannot step on, then that person just may just be taking them for granted. All right. So, and so I know that so, the political so, parties will not take so, the people so, for so, granted. So, so, so we have, we have a large number of people in Nigeria. Last election, over 80 million voters. And we know that from 1999 uh, or from 2003, I need to check, the the number of voters, registered voters who turn up on election day has been dropping. We have had, we had the highest number of registered voters in the 2019 presidential election, and we had the lowest voter turnout in the 2019 elections of all the years since 1999. Um, you look at, at voter apathy, it's an issue. It's an issue. And you're, you're telling me that people are going to come out irrespective of whether they feel it's safe to do so, um, irrespective of, of whether they, they feel there's a reason that their votes will count? Let me put it this way. There has always been cases of voter apathy right from the days of SDP and RSC. You can never guarantee the total maximum of the voters will come out at the, voting, at the polling votes. But what does the winning of a, of a vote translate to? It translates to the maximum total number of votes that have voted for the most popular party. And that is all that you need to point, you need to take a look at. Even at the last local government elections, there was voter apathy. But at the end of the day, it was all about the party that came out to campaign even more vigorously. So, we, so, so, so the parties, the parties that, um, you know, uh, you've talked about, for instance, the PDP is, is uh, appointing an accusing finger at the APC saying uh, you're responsible in securing the country, you've not done well and all that, look at the stats. And you are seeing that the PDP too also has to look at itself and ask itself questions. Have you seen any political party amongst the, eight, the other 16 political parties that can give the two leading parties a run for their money? To be quite frank. Because, because that is where, if you want to see a change, it may come from, may, may. I'm not saying you can have a change in the PDP or the APC, you can. But, but. 
Another thing about winning elections is about party structure. I mean, you look at Nigeria as a country as within the six geopolitical regions, the 774 local governments that it has, which of the parties has that structure on ground? And that's one reason why I said to you, one of the major determinants for this next election will be the individual. The individual, any of the parties, the two key parties who select that individual who the people believe in and that the people Hold on. Okay. The people <laughs> okay. are convinced okay. that this is a this is a person who can deliver for us with sway their votes. So have you seen any one, and I'm going somewhere with this, Ehechuk, have you seen any candidate that the people can believe in amongst all those who've come out to say, I want to, let's start from the People's Democratic Party, who can do something different amongst all those who've come out to pick forms, so to say, I intend to pick a form. There are a lot of credible candidates who have come out of great. Okay, so for instance, Peter Obi, is that who Absolutely. you're looking at? I, I don't know. I'm not campaigning for him. I'm just well, asking. Um, because people seem to, you know, cast him in the same light as uh, those technocrats and all that, like Kingston Mogalu. You know, they it, say he was governor of Anambra State and left a healthy, you know, uh, uh, account. Yes. Know. I mean, so let me, let, me, let me tell you something. When, when, when the people begin to um, look at such candidates, and if you trace back, and then you come, you make comparisons now, and they begin to make this kind of comparisons, begin to um, um, read out this kind of qualities about this kind of people. Mm -hmm. You see that they are judgment, their mindset, they are making the kind of judgment for the kind of person that they think should suit Nigeria. It tells you who they don't want. Okay, it clearly so, 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 tells you. So, so, it, may, so, it, may, yeah. it tells you clearly. Yeah. yeah. It, can, it, can, so, it so, clearly so, tells you the kind of person that they do not want. So, so, I, so, so, you know, I think we can safely say. Let me, let me re, let me edit what I said. Mm. You said, I shouldn't say nothing or nothing. You disagree with that. Okay. Why well, I said nothing or nothing? Because no other party outside APC or PDP will produce the next president. It won't happen. For what I'm seeing, it won't happen. Now, these candidates that you're talking about, um, you have, because people are sitting there waiting for the election day to go vote. But the election is even won before the election, my brother. And people are sitting back, saying, and sir. So I want to ask you this. Um, there is no way, or there's a high chance, or a, let me say, a very limited chance. Do you agree with the school of thought? Let me put it that way. There's a limited chance for an aspirant who doesn't bribe delegates to emerge or doesn't uh, do political horse trading to emerge as the party's flag bearer the, in, this, in these two parties. The mechanics of internal party politics in especially in these two in mechanics of part the mechanics of internal party structure of course um requires that the candidate has to do what um, is required to make sure that he comes out as a flat bearer um but what we what we what we see a lot of times is that even in doing that the party mechanism always looks at the caliber and in this state the current party in power know that there are a lot of things that a lot of areas where the jury is out on them. And that's one of the reasons why you will find that eventually they are going to ensure that the kind of candidates who are going to come out eventually to run for that primaries are kind of candidates that will make it impossible for the Nigerian man not to at least accept one. So 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 you, you believe that the normal or what we've seen in the past, <laughs> what we've seen play out in the past in, in the in the presidential primaries of some parties where it's about um, who has the money bag, who can pay the highest. I do admit, in 2015, uh, Muhammad Buhari said he didn't have money. All right, he didn't have money. I don't know if maybe Atiku had money then. I don't know. But, but, but yes, it can happen. But, it, you know, it takes some of the candidates that are being touted from the two leading parties. These sound like candidates who would not even pay one couple because it's not their principle to do that. Do well, they have a chance? Principles aside, as long as you're playing politics and you're a politician, you will, you will do what is necessary to make sure that your target, your objective is gotten. Now, um, whatever is done in that internal politicking is what, I mean, you and I can never, can only be left to, to be imagined. So even when they say that they do not have money or money bags to throw around, um, they still do what is required to mm. come out as candidates. Right. Um, uh, yes, I do agree with you that the two strongest parties on ground that who are even doing something currently are the APC and the PDP. And um, um, for now, that is the grim realities on ground. 
and that is what is going to remain unless another party comes out with the right form of candidate and the right form of structure to rival them. And that's just where it is. What do Nigerians need to do, the voting public, what do they need to do right now, even before the elections, to ensure that as far as insecurity is concerned, the next president of Nigeria will be someone, male or female, who can tackle insecurity head on. I'm not talking about what we call bobo juice. Yeah. You know, you come on TV and then you talk. You you know, and then meanwhile, it's just talk because people can look at your track record and see that you've not actually done what you say you want to do for Nigeria in the little office you've had. So what do Nigerians need to do starting now? So that by the end, the day, you know, Mahmoud Yakuba announces the result, you have a president who can tackle insecurity head on. They need to look very critically at all the candidates that are coming out, all the candidates that are claiming that they can, they can deliver. They, can not look, they need to look at the number of people who have been killed for since 2011. They need to look at the number of people who have been displaced. They need to look at um, 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 the, the, the fringes on which this country is on, the number of um, refugees that have been rendered homeless. Um, they need to look at the, the, the pervasive kidnapping that's continued. They, look, they need to look at the insecurity that has gone from not just Niger Delta militancy down to Boko Haram, down to the Kato Her Heras issues, down to the kidnapping, down to the robbery. They need to look at all of these issues and look very critically at the experience of the candidates who are going to come out and ask themselves the kind of questions that speak to, can this person take the tough decisions? Because what is required is tough decisions. Um, we hear a lot of stories when, they, when presidents go into power and we hear things about them being bedraggled by kitchen cabinets. They need to look at people who cannot be bedraggled by kitchen cabinets. They are candidates who are out right now who have taken certain decisions at, at, positions, at positions of power that tells you that these are the kind of people that can do something when the chips are down. And it's very important because, let me be very frank with you, the 2023, 2023 political election is going to be one of, if not the most important elections in the history of this country because we are practically at, at our trolls. In the last seven years, I don't know, or I don't think, I, I don't recall we have experienced the kind of situations that we experienced, so much so that the value of life is so devalued. Right. And these are the things that Nigerians need to look at when they make their choice. Interesting. Uh, it's, good, it's good that we've ended up running off on the note of what needs to be done, not what has happened in the past. Thank you very much, uh, Ihechiku Beji, for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me. And that's uh, the match you can take on this first segment of, the, of Plus Politics. And uh, we'll be right back. We'll take a short break. When we return, Marik rejects Governor Sawon Lu's endorsement or rejects the endorsement of Governor Sawon Lu for a second term. You're watching Plus Politics. <laughs>